hello and welcome to RGB Edit Reviews. Excuse my voice. It was a late one last night. This is a watch that has come in. This, in fact, it came in last week, but I haven't had a chance to have a proper look. It's a Casio GA110C, as I remember. Now, a few things. When this turned up, I, for a second, in my inexperienced watch messing, thought it was a fake because the writing here is coloured in. And the writing there is not. But I did a bit of research, and as it turns out, that is how some of them came. Also, this LCD panel inside here is actually mirrored, which is really unusual. I have never seen a G-Shock where the LCD panel is a mirror. So that, I thought that was quite interesting. The resin's kind of got a shiny finish. It's not as quite as shiny as this fella here, which is a very shiny strap that this came in and I just chucked a battery in it and tried it out. Needs a proper strap replacement. So with this today, I think I've got a coffee and uh, I think we should just take it apart and maybe get all the bits together, give it a clean, see if we can get it working again. But it's a nice watch. So, if you look at it, there's a lot of like white residue, and quite often under here where they are up in contact with yourself, your skin, you get loads of dirt. But it appears that somebody has attempted to clean it, but not fully cleaned it, if you know what I mean. Also, this is upside down. So this, if you hold the watch the correct way, that should, so like that, and turn it over, your G-Shock should have its lid the correct way over, but it hasn't. Now, I'm trying to work out if that means it's had a battery change in its life, or it hasn't, but the screws look pretty good. So I don't know, so we're gonna strip it down, and we're gonna see what it's like inside. Have a little slurp of my tea, my coffee, sorry. Hmm. Very nice. So, always remember, don't have too much coffee when you're doing this, because you'll have the shanks. Hold on. Which I have slightly. Got the shanks. Here's two. Now, I wasn't going to do a video like this, but another channel, a chap called Jeff Buys Cars, encouraged me to do a video like this. And he said it would be something that he would probably watch. So, we'll see if it's what he wants to watch or whether you lot think it's boring as hell. So let's take this cover off. Now on the bottom of this we should have a plastic cover and we should have an o-ring. This is your piezo speaker. So this is what goes beep 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 and drives everybody mad. And there should be a tiny spring that touches that. Now if you have this upside down and don't put this in correctly, then this won't work. And this is interesting, this is sat, this is actually sat, sat up. If we have a look, this is not sat down flush, which it should be. It's actually in the wrong position. So I'm gonna take that off. Oh, thank goodness for that. So this little spring here, tiny little spring, they love to pop out, and they're about eight pound each, so. And that's it there. So we're not going to mess with that. So first of all, it's time to get the battery out. There's another tool for that. In and amongst my tools, we are going to use this little chap, which... Oh, the, actually the inside wants to come out. Let's, 
I don't want to take it out because I don't want to damage it. It's actually safer in there whilst we try and pop the uh, the battery cover clip off. And I had a watch in the other day that was broken because what somebody had done, they'd ragged the battery pin off. And by ragging it, they'd actually snapped the little black hook that it goes onto. So we're just gonna lift that slightly. So what battery have we got in here? There we go. This is a CR122. Don't know if you can see that, can't kind of focus. Yeah. Little three volt battery made in Indonesia. Interesting. So this is a watch that was put together in Thailand. So it could be the original battery. But it's odd that somebody would take it apart. Now, I have a big pile of batteries here. And this looks like the correct one. So we shall, the hardest part is getting the battery out of the cover, out of the pack. So we shall uh, do that. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna do this video as a one and done because to be honest, I think for you guys, you probably don't care too much about waiting around. If you're watching this video, you can always fast forward to the more exciting bits, or you just stay where here and wait for me to fight on with this highly irritating battery pack. There we go. So we have a battery. Bosh. There we go. And I need to order some more of them because I've right. So let's pop that in there. And it's literally as simple as pushing it down. And that is in now. So we've got the battery in. Now you have to do something called a AC reset. And for that, you'll need, ideally, some metal tweezers. And you'll see there is a tiny, tiny little dot just there. So inside there is a little brass mount. You'll see it says AC reset. So what we have to do, we're going to put one part of this on the body. And then the other one is going to touch that circuit board. So we're doing that now. And we just hold it in there for a few seconds. I normally do five seconds. Something like that. And then it should be fully reset. And the question is, we haven't turned it over. I don't want the spring to fall out. Hey, we've got some, we've got some numbers. This is exciting. So let me make sure my finger is over that little tiny spring that wants to go. There we go. We have got this flashing sub. So it does work. I don't know what color the light is. Now, one of the big mistakes people make with these is not putting the seal in correctly. And I can see there the seal has been kinked because it's not been put together properly. So we're just going to take that out. That'll be okay. We can reuse that. So around here has got a lot of dirt. So let's pull this fella out of here. I'm actually going to use my fingers, which is... No, I'm not. I'm going to use my plastic tongs. Just do not want to lose that spring. So that is all your Casio is when you take it all apart. That's all it is. That's the module. So if it would focus. There we go. So the faces very rarely are dirty. And same with the backs. They're normally pretty good. So we're going to leave that alone. Let's put that over here where it can't get damaged. And then we've got the case. So on here I like to check these little fellas on here. There's like little, I don't know if you can see them, they're so tiny. 
They're like little C clips that go round the push button. See? Got to make sure they're all on. Because one of the things you can do when you push the case back in, if you don't do it properly, they get hung up and then your buttons don't work. And sometimes they get knocked off. They are an absolute pig to put back on, but it can be done. Um, inside looks pretty good. So now I'm looking at this strap and I'm thinking, this strap is not bad. I think it's original. Part of me would like to modify it. And part of me thinks, don't touch it. Let's have a look. I don't know if these will fit even. We need some more coffee for this bit. Mm. So these are little adapter things, but they are too, they look too wide to me. Oh, I don't know. They might just make it. Shall we try one? Let's have a look at the straps. I bought some straps the other day that are modded straps. And they were very cool. Uh, like this fella. Right here. Look at that. So my idea was... See, that would fit on there. We could only try, can't we? So first of all, let's get one of them out. Sorry, I keep moving it. I keep forgetting that I haven't got the camera there. Sorry, that I have a camera there because normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't be filming this part. Come on. So basically what you've got, this, this tool's got like a little V in the end. And what we're trying to do is we're pulling back the pin. But this sucker has been on for a while. I can tell. It's definitely original. The original ones, I like this, they're tough, they're hard to get on. I'm just going to have to... So that's one out. There we go. Now we don't want to lose this. I'll put that over there. Now I just want to see if one of these new ones will fit in that space. Because it looks... Ooh! It might just do that, you know. Happy days. So let's get the other spring bar. I'd kind of like to use the original spring bar, but we're going to try this one first. This is just experimenting. Whoop. So uh, there's a definite technique to these, which involves not trying to lose your temper. So, yeah, see that's quite thin, you know. I wonder if we can use the original. Part of me would like to use the original because I just think they're better quality. Look how chunky that pin is next to that pin. You know what I mean? Let me just move it so you can see it. Look how chunky that sucker is. So that's your G-Shock pin. And that's your Chinese one. But sometimes the holes on these don't fit the G-Shock one. Because they're too chunky. Chunky, chunky. It's just a... No, see, that's that's the problem right there. That That will not go inside there at all so we're gonna have to stick with that one anyway which is a shame so what i tend to do get that that bit lined up somewhere near ah oh, man that sucks i don't know whether i'm going to go with this to be honest you can see can't we That clip sucks. Mm, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced this is the way I want to go with this. But it would look sick finished. 
I don't know. Such a kid. There we go. Alright. Mmm. I don't like the way that that is so big and loose. So if you were a professional watch person, this would be a two second job for you. Yeah, I don't, I just, it's in. Yeah, that's crap. I'm not happy with that. It just wants to fall out. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. I have some better pins. See, what I'd like to do is put this on. This is cool, isn't it? It's like a paracord style. And that would go basically around there. I'll give it some sort of special funky kind of beefed up. I don't know whether I like that actually when I put it next to it. I don't know. What do we think? I feel like this is, needs to be worn a little bit. Got two little bits of bamboo. It's just a paracord, paracord strap with like an old, uh, like a clasp like that it's quite cool but see this watch is pretty plain and boring so part of me wants to put it on oh, I'm gonna just roll with it let's try no harm in trying I think the key is to get the correct size clips first they're tiny split pins let me go up here Right, I'm going to mess around with these because there's about a million different ones in here. So, I about. have, so I'm going to mess with those. It's got some better quality pins in there now. And these are pretty solid. Now, they're not as good as the original straps. There's no way. But whoever buys this, when I put it on to Vinted, I will include the original straps. And I will also include the original pins, but... This is not going anywhere. I've stuck a nice big fat thumbprint on the crystal on the inside. Uh, so now it's really time to get this mankiness off it. So this is my high-tech cleaning solution, which consists of an old toothbrush. Actually, not an old one, but a new one. And, uh, and some water and a bit of cleaning solution. So we're just going to have a little jiggle around and see I've put these in from earlier it's quite interesting because there's like I don't know if you can see that but it's like a milky residue now so I don't know if that will come off it might be something that they cleaned it with I don't know but I like to include the original straps because I think that's quite a cool thing if you like you know, you want to put it back. It's a two-minute job. I, I, if I get a spare tool, um, I include the tool as well, so you can swap the strap back. Um, that was my phone pinging in the background, so I'm going to just see what that looks like now. Still, some of this residue. Very strange. Part of me thinks. I wonder if this is. Uh, it's come up all right. Sometimes I had one once and it was so smoky. The person had obviously smoked and the resin watch actually smelled cigarette smoke. And it just made me think, gosh, I wonder what their lungs were like. If, uh, if a watch can smell that bad. And uh, basically what we, I did with that one is I left it for three days in like a cleaning solution and the resin started to pick up the smell of the cleaning solution then. Yeah, it's interesting this, whatever they I think they said they've wiped it with something. 
which has given it that weird finish. Something's going to be triggered now, just the fact that I'm doing this so close to the keyboard. And I am slightly triggered, so that's okay. It's definitely original uh, strap. Somebody said to me, why do you clean it with that? You know, it'll damage it. Well, these are waterproof, so I don't think it's really going to make any difference. So, there we go. That's... You know what it might be? I wonder if there were like painter decorators or something. And it's it's almost like a smudged paint. It comes off though. There we go. <clears throat> They're not going back on anyway, but I like to keep them clean them. So let's do all this. It's all mucky. The new pins are um, stainless. Now one of the things that I do sometimes is I take all of these out. But because this one's not actually in that bad a condition, I'm not going to do it. Because I, I just don't. There's no point. It's like just making more work for myself. But we're going to go and clean all of the bits and bobs. Oh, that's satisfying. I hope you're enjoying this video. Please uh, drop a like and a subscribe. Um, I've got another channel as well called Nerd in Motion where I do car stuff. So if you like cars and general stuff, please head over there. Have a look. Um, cause a bit of pressure on these bits here. Um, it's funny because the last one of the videos I did about Casio's got a crazy amount of views on this channel and I was saying to my wife wouldn't it be hilarious that all the work I put in to do car stuff turns out it's pointless because actually watches is where it's at it's at AS, ASMR <laughs> right Just a few seconds. I put the uh, this. I'm going to put this seal in as well because it's warm water. That's going to help. That right. I need a cloth, and in my many, many, what you can't see off off screen there is a whole load of different cloths and bits and bobs that we can use. So I'm going to go and get one. Green, oh, this is my green, my green, green, green. Right, so let's try these ones first. Do, do, do. Yeah, that's come up pretty good. See, no more white residue. There's a little bit inside there, but that doesn't matter because they're not going back on anyway. And you can do them, clean them as much as you like. Look, looks lovely. Just move this. Normally, what I do as well, we're gonna we're gonna put this near the heater which is under my desk just for a few minutes and get every bit of moisture out of it because we don't want any inside the case at all not even a schmidgen even though the just check out i'm happy with this Ooh, it's got fluff off me thing on it Look at that, it's come up lovely. This is going to be a really nice watch for somebody. My biggest problem doing this is I end up, I want to keep them all. I just want to keep them all. Just look at that. That has come up nice. There's a little mark there and there, but only slight. 
Nice, I'm happy with that. So, I'm just gonna dry it off in front of the heater and I'll come back. Right, completely dried off now. Um, I went and tried to get the last bit of those marks off and, and kind of got it looking better. So now we're gonna put the mechanism back in or the unit, there's not much to it. What you have to be careful when you put these back is the little tabs for the buttons actually pass the those little C-clips I was telling you about earlier. And you've got to make sure you've got it square on. And I'm hoping the spring hasn't come out, which it hasn't, so. Woo, don't drop it, don't drop it. Right, so you'll see these springs No, I'm not happy with that. Start again. Right. Ow, I just hit my head on the lamp. Now this is a little bit fiddly, so. And as you can see, it's completely off center. So I've seen a few of these that I've got where people say buttons aren't working and nearly every single time I've got them, it's because these haven't been put in correctly. And so what happens is it rides up because it, it feels unnatural the way that it wants to sit, but it gets basically caught on. I'm gonna make sure that that is, no, that's not quite center. I've got to make sure that this is centered up inside. That's just, that is, I just moved it. You didn't even, I bet you didn't even see that. I just moved it a smidge. Let's just check these buttons all work. Oh, the light works. It's a nice little light. Oh, it, I prefer the illuminator style, but there we go. Yeah, that hand works. Oh, this is looking good. Right. Now we need to get that seal. Bye, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not that kind of seal. Let's get the uh, seal. McLaren F1, one of the greatest cars I think ever made. If you disagree, put it in the comments. Okay, look at that, it's gone back to its original, it's got a little tiny nick in it, but it's not actually broken the seal exactly. Broken the seal, that's me think of going for a wee. Right, okay, that is spot on in place. Now, this fella here, this can also screw up your watch when you're replacing the battery if you don't put it in exactly the right spot. And weirdly, it doesn't look correct when you put it down, but It'll go more than one way nine times out of ten. So we want we want that little spring to be exposed. So that won't work. So it has to be that. It could, could we go like that? No, that won't work. Could we go like this? Yeah, that's that's I would guess is exactly where it should be. Let's try it like this. No, because that is not letting the spring pass. So that is not correct. Where is my doodah? I don't want, these ones are metal, which are great, but not always. I don't want to poke around in with metal in it. If I can help it. Oh. Let's go this way, and then the battery is at least p protected. There we go. Oh, look, that fell in. There you go. So that's another thing with these watches. If it doesn't want to go, then it probably shouldn't go. I've just realized I forgot to clean this. So we'll just clean this little fella, the back plate, and then give it a wipe. Let me move this completely out of the way. We'll just, la la la. All right, let's get this looking nice.
So here it's Bank Holiday Monday whilst I'm filming this. I hope you're all having a good Easter weekend. Oh, I hear children. I have my kids have got their cousins coming around. There you go, there's somebody at the door. The gate's open though. So I'm gonna get this finished for you. Oh, that's looking better. That's nice. <laughs> There's nothing better than the sound of my kids happy. Right, so, correct way of getting this on, make sure this piezo is touching that spring, which would indicate it has to go this way. We know the seal's in the right place. So, when you're tightening these suckers up, just remember, you're not talking up a set of truck wheel nuts. You are just putting a tiny screw into a piece of plastic. So they do not need to be crazy tight. And please, if you're undoing them, use the correct size screwdriver. Otherwise, you end up mashing them up. So these watches as well, they're anti-magnetic. So speakers, microwaves, all that kind of stuff that can affect a movement in a watch. It's completely unable to affect these watches. Is nice as well. The military like these so much. They're great for work. They're just great for for everything really. And yeah, I'll just tweak them up. Opposites. Remember, always tighten things in an opposite fashion. There we go. And there we have it. She's looking good. We'll have to set it and calibrate the hands in a minute. But it's look, look at that. It's she look at it. Absolutely immaculate. It's come up like new. Wheel time. Yeah, so we're gonna that's the next thing. So we're gonna we're gonna put this cool strap on. If you giggled then you're going to hell. <laughs> right. I'll find the correct doodah for this. That's a technical term, doodah. That's way too big, I think. I don't know. Yeah, that's too big. We're getting close though. These pins I bought are pretty good quality actually. Compared to. But what happened was. Yeah, I reckon that's about right. They got jiggled about and I dropped them whilst talking to somebody and then they ended up all over the place. And now. I reckon that will go on. So, let's undo this. It's very funky looking, unusual paracord style strap.
Now I'm hoping this feels way too big. But equally so. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? These are stainless steel as well. Very nice. Um, I need another one of those pins. So it's this one. This is slightly smaller than that one. Yep. That one's bent. I'm not putting that in. I'm not happy with that one. Just find another. Another. Oh, I wish this were in size order. No, that's way too small. What about this one? You literally are seeing the um edited. learning process that I go through. Something like that. Somewhere near. Yeah, that'll, that'll definitely do it. Push that through that pin there. Here we go. Push that in there, if I can. Use that to hook it in. Whoa, actually that might, that might not be quite the right size up. It feels a bit small. Yeah, that's not the right size up. Oh, I don't, yeah. Oh no. Can I pull it out? Uh, no, it is the right size. It's okay. She's okay. Right. So now we have a very pimped out looking G-Shock. Look at that. Woo. It's cool, isn't it? Right, let's take this one off. See what it looks like. I can see one thing that I might do if I own this, which is lose this pin here. So I'm going to put it on. Upside down, like that. It's got two. Mmm, this could be a tricky sucker to put on. Isn't it? Yeah, you might need your missus to, your other half to help you put this on. As I'm discovering. I think also though, the paracord after a while will just end up being in the correct position. It's probably because it's been stored flat for, yeah, all that time. I'll turn that on like that. Keep hitting the microphone, sorry about that people. There you go. Hey, look at that. That's pretty cool. Nice chunky strap as well. I like that. Right, we're going to set this sucker now. So, if I remember rightly. I'll take a little few minutes to work this out. It's not that. No, that's just flicking through. That's the light. There we go. So, first we want the correct time. So we want London. 
There's so many different places on here. I need to have some more of this coffee. Oh. There we go. I think we pressed that one. Uh, that is to do with, I think you roll the watch and it'll do auto light. But, oh no, it's daylight saving time. Don't need that because we're not on that yet. 12 hour. That's the minutes. Right, what is the actual time? This watch will tell me. It is 12.54. So, go back to 12. And 54. And then what year it is. So it is 2024. Then, no, that's 27. What am I doing? That button there. What the date? April the 1st today. on the other way there we go now LT is your how long you want the light to stay on for and I like it to be on three which is the longest amount of time and we're there then so the only thing that we've got left to do is to calibrate the hands Right, so the hands you can see are way out now. They're nowhere near. So now I have to remember how to do the hands. And I think you hold down forward. There we go. And then what you have to do There we go. So we're going to wind these all the way back to. Now you think you want to set them to the time, but you don't. What you want to set them to is so that both the hands are facing the 12 o'clock position. Let's go, let's go, let's go in. So, in a minute, we'll stop it. Let's just go a little bit. There we go. So, they're there. Now we press this and again. And then we go. There we go. So, now. That will go automatically into the correct position. There you go. And that is how you set the time on this magnificent GA110C. And uh, I'll just turn this light off so you can see what it looks like when it's dark. Look at that. There we go. You can see the hands. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video of this watch. And uh, we've we've got it looking mint now, so I'm going to take some photos and stick that in the Vinted shop, and I will put a link to it where you can buy this watch and uh, enjoy it. So I hope this lasts a long time for somebody, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. God bless, and I'll see you all on the flip side.